The hard knock rocker from the Bronx. I am the hard knock rocker from the Bronx. I am the hard knock rocker from the Bronx. I am the hard knock rocker. It's the hard blood line. Good evening. I'm Laura Diaz. And I'm Paul Majors. You're watching Studio 2, where we talk about what you're talking about. Tonight, gang violence is on the rise in some of our communities, and criminals are increasingly younger and more brazen. What can be done? Better or more policing? Or should the focus be on gang intervention and prevention? More money for jobs, extended recreation programs for youth in the inner city. The answer may not be clear, but we need to stay vigilant to save the lives of the innocent. Welcome back to Studio 2. Tonight we're discussing gangs and the threat they pose in Southern California. Joining us now is Alex Alonzo. He's a Ph.D. candidate at the University of Southern California, where he's published a thesis and is a columnist for StreetGangs.com. Alex, you have done extensive research on the gangs of Southern California, L.A. in particular. I've read some of that. I think most people may be surprised at how far back gangs go in L.A.'s history. Well, the research that you've read about and that I've done specifically is more about L.A.'s history going back to the 40s and 50s. But, I mean, you could take it back 200 years when you look at gang history in the United States. Um, there was a popular movie a couple years ago go out called Gangs of New York that really took it back to the mid-1800s. So this is not a new phenomenon. It's been going on for decades. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened uh, post-World War II. Because of uh, some of the racial discrimination that was going on in L.A., specifically restrictive covenants, there was only so many places blacks could live, and they all crowded up in this one area called the Central Vernon area, and that's pretty much like the, the birthplace of L.A.'s first gangs in terms of the black community. And there was a quiet period, was there not, if I recall the research correctly, during the early part of the 60s? Um, actually, from 65, after the Watts riots in the summer of uh, 1965, is when a lot of those clubs slash gangs came to a truce and started to reevaluate what they were doing. They noticed that th there was uh, police brutality started to increase under a new chief. Um, the watch riots happened, and they just decided to reevaluate what they were doing, and they came to a permanent truce. Mm -hmm. And then gangs didn't resurge again until around 69, 70. And what caused them to ramp up again? Oh, man, there was just, um, there was a big campaign against all of the, the black leadership in Los Angeles. They started to change their perspective, and then the Black Panthers came in, and everyone knows about the Black Panthers. And then there was just, there was a lot of conflict between different political groups, black political groups in L.A., that were just trying to achieve peace. And uh, through misunderstanding, the Black Panther Party were considered, you know, terrorists, and the police came in, and they pretty much arrested and killed a lot of the leadership at that time. So what happened to the teenagers that were coming up in the late 60s, there was no leadership for them to follow. And eventually they got into their own thing and, you know, gangs resurged again and it was just a lack of leadership. And by the time you get to 71, 72, 73, you have a whole new gang phenomenon like you did in the late 40s, early 50s. Mm -hmm. What do you think sustains a modern day gang? One of the things is that every gang has a rival with another gang. And once you're fighting, once you start a rivalry with another gang, that's pretty much a permanent thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we have rivalries in Los Angeles go back about 30 years and they're still fighting today and that's probably one of the things that really fuel the existence of the gang because if you grow up in that neighborhood you're going to side you're going to side with those people from that area and you're automatically not going to like the other side because this is the neighborhood you grew up in did you see it as a hopeless situation um i hate to be a pessimist but i don't think that that gangs are going anywhere they've been here for a couple hundred years mm -hmm. um I, I see that the gang population is growing and I think it's just something we have to deal with and try to figure out different ways to curb the violence, not really get rid of the gang. Right, right. Alex Alonzo, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. We appreciate it. Was it was a pleasure. It. Thanks yeah, for having appreciate me. Appreciate it very much. Rockin' it, rockin' it, yes, he is rockin' it. Tito, rockin' it, yes, he is rockin' it. Mike said, rockin' it, yes, he is rockin' it.